In this one, we are going to be creating a dropdown in React. So the content of that dropdown is going to be loaded from an API. And then when you select something, we're going to have stuff show up in the page. This is a great way to condense the size of your page, but still have the same amount of information. Right now we have everything just barfed on the page here, but if you could just select one to get the price, well then this entire thing could be condensed to the size of this little section right here versus a never ending scrolling page. So I just committed crypto summary component. If you want to get the code at where it is currently located, <laughs> that was a weird way to say that, but you get what I'm saying. So let's go ahead and create a dropdown. So instead of rendering the actual crypto summary for each crypto, we will render a dropdown list item, which is actually surprisingly easy. We will create an option and this is going to have the crypto name displayed right here. So crypto.name. And then all we have to do is return to get rid of all these errors. All right, so let's see what that looks like. Uh, it's not working. Now all of these options that we're going to be able to choose from need to go inside of a select. So we'll create a select right here. And then we'll take the closing tag and move that to after the loop. So we only have one of the select tags, the open and close, and then we'll loop inside to create a bunch of options. This will give us a drop down with all of the different cryptocurrencies. Pretty cool, not gonna lie. So now we have to figure out which one we have selected. So when we select something, how do we get information to pop up? Well, for the option, we're going to have a key and a value. So we'll say key and value. And we will use the ID for both of these. So crypto.id and crypto.id. So the key here is actually for React. So if we remove that and take a look at the console, warning each child in the list should have a unique key prop. So that's what that key is for. The value, on the other hand, is to decide which one was clicked. This allows us to get the target value inside of an on change. So I have on change. And this is going to be a function with the event being passed in. So we'll create a parameter there. And let's just console log e.target.value. So let's see, we will select one of these and we can see the value in the console. So for each one of the options, we've added a value attribute. And this is what is used for e.target.value inside of the onChange event handler. What happens if you don't put that value? I was initially confused by this because I would go in and remove value. And when I selected one of these, it still appeared to work. So for example, I would click one of these and it would say Terra Luna Classic. But the important thing to know is that each option element should have a value attribute containing the data value to submit to the server when that option is selected. If no value attribute is included, the value defaults to the text contained inside the element. So this is really using crypto.name instead of crypto.id. So what that means is if we put back the value and try this again, we can still select the same one Terra Luna Classic and get something in the console, but this time it's Terra Luna, which is the ID for that cryptocurrency. So subtle thing, but you should just know that it's probably important to have that value there because the ID is a better way to identify one of these cryptocurrencies. Now inside of our code, instead of console logging here, what we can do is we can actually find that ID inside of the array and display the extra information. So what we can do is we can say cryptos, which is our state dot find, and you can see this automatically uses optional chaining. And this is going to take a function where the property here, we'll just call it X is each one of the cryptos as it loops through these. And we will just return true if the ID is equal to E dot target dot value, which we will get from that E there. So to do that, we can actually remove these curly braces and just check if x.id is equal to e.target.value. If these return true, it'll return that element from the array, which we can then assign to some variable. So we'll just say const c. And then what we can do is we'll console log c just to see that it's still working. So let's try it. We will refresh. We'll select one of these and we get that object. 
So that's how we can go from an ID to an entire object. Now what we can do is we can just display this information on the page. I think the easiest way to do that is to have a selected state. So what we'll do is we will create a new state up here. Const selected and set selected. And this is going to be use state. What type is this going to be? Well, instead of an array of crypto like we've done up here, it's just going to be a single crypto. So it'll look pretty similar. We'll say crypto or null and we will default to null. And that should do the trick. And now we can set selected down in our event handler. So instead of console log C, we will say set selected and pass in C. Now we can refer to the state down below. We have one problem, argument of type crypto or undefined is not assignable to parameters of type set state action crypto or null. The easiest fix for this is just to allow an undefined. So instead of defaulting to null, we can just empty that and that works just the same. Now we have selected, so we should be able to render this down below. So after this select div, we will just render a crypto summary and pass in the crypto that's selected as the crypto prop. So we'll say selected and then close that. Now I must have one parent element, so let's go ahead and surround this entire thing in a fragment. So we'll open it there and then close it all the way down below after the crypto summary. Now we will need to do some conditional rendering here to fix this problem because we won't want to do this if we don't have a selected crypto. So we will just say selected with a question mark and if not, we will just return null. We'll save that, and now let's try out our application. We'll click the dropdown, select one, and the value shows up. One other quick change I wanna make is to have a default value there that is not a cryptocurrency, but rather a general message like choose an option. To do this, you will create another select option, which will say whatever you want, and then you have to just set that as the default. So to create that option, we're going to place it here. So inside of the select, but not inside of the loop, we only want one of these, and we're going to say option, choose an option. So we can check this out and you'll see that it is the default here since it's the first one there. However, just to be completely proper, let's just say as an example, this came after the loop. Well, now it's still going to say Bitcoin and we're going to have choose an option down here at the bottom. So if you really do want to tell the select that this is the default, what you can do is give this a value and we'll just call it something like default. And then inside of the select, we can create a new attribute default value and we will say default. So now in theory, this should work the same when it's at the top and if we move it down to the bottom, it should still be the default. Yes, there it is. <laughs> I was like, oh no, it's not working. I just had to do a quick refresh. So there is how you choose a default message for it to be displayed to the user. And if you want, you can go through a little of extra effort to figure out how to choose a certain cryptocurrency by default and display that information on the page. That's up to you. That's all I got for the drop down in this